Hello again, Wastelanders, and welcome back to WGNR. My name's Ryan, and today we're going to be taking a look at another iconic faction uh, as part of my Better Know a Faction series, one that should be instantly recognizable to fans of the series, the Brotherhood of Steel. Now this power armor clad group of medieval inspired knights and scribes are the morally ambiguous um, good guys, if you will, in the Fallout franchise, and they are focused on one thing and one thing only, and that's going to be technology. Outstanding. They've been traveling across the post-nuclear United States, doing their best to secure all kinds of technology to further impede humanity from destroying itself any more than it already has. Now, the Brotherhood was founded in the aftermath of the Great War by a soldier named Maxon, who discovered that the United States military at the time had been doing some experiments on some civilians in the form of the forced evolutionary virus. Fans of the series will know that this is the chemical compound which created super mutants. The early BOS adopted this knight in shining power armor motif and have been using it ever since to patrol the wastes and safeguard humanity against itself. That's been more or less their main bag ever since and as a result these guys and gals have collected a pretty awesome force of technology in the form of power armor, laser weapons, and even a giant robot or two. So let's take a look at all of the different units and tactics that make the Brotherhood of Steel such a great faction to play in Fallout Wasteland Warfare. Now when it comes to faction special rules, the Brotherhood are actually noticeably lacking compared to some other factions in the game, most notably one of their biggest rivals, the Enclave. In fact, the BOS faction rule is more of a restriction than a buff. The BOS reference card states that any force with a Brotherhood unit as its leader cannot include any non-unique super mutant units. Then that's pretty much it. That's really the only faction specific rule governing the Brotherhood. And it's more of a lore friendly bit of branding than a game mechanic, unless you were really looking to play a mixed Brotherhood mutant list which you can still do, I mean, especially in narrative mode, where really it's all up to your imagination what you want to do. But if you want to keep it thematic and playing with the reference card, then you'd be limited to unique Brotherhood units. <laughs> Scratch that, you'd be limited to unique mutant units. Currently, these would be Hammer, Fist, Strong, and the Super Mutant Aviator. Now, if you want to get into the technical side of things, I mean, you can still build a BOS mutant hybrid list and bring whatever mutants you want with you, so long as you make a mutant your leader. But this only really applies to previous versions of battle mode. And because there have been changes to the battle mode lists as of recently, at the time of this filming, no unique super mutants appear anywhere on the BOS battle mode list. So a hybrid list in a tournament fight looks like a no-go for the time being. Sorry to all of you competitive players who had dreams of bringing 16 skirmishers along with some night patrol blades. Not that you'd want to do that. Essentially, it's no mutants allowed if you're playing Brotherhood of Steel. Of course, if you're playing a narrative mode or skirmish, go nuts. Bring whatever mutants you want along for the ride and just have a blast. Do what you want to do. What the Brotherhood lack in biodiversity, they make up for in survivability and versatility when it comes to high-tech goodies, uh, objective runners, and expertise skills. With the faction stuff out of the way, let's take a look at some of the different units and go over some of the different power armors as well that you can bring along with you when fielding a Brotherhood force. Um, I I'm going to try to future-proof these reviews as much as possible and avoid quoting direct cap costs because um, I have a feeling that when the new Vegas stuff comes out uh, in just a few months here, um, some of these numbers are going to change. Maybe I'll do another series, even better Noah Faction, better-er Noah Faction. I digress. We'll burn that bridge when we come to it. Let's take a look at some Brotherhood units. 
Anyone who's played any of the Fallout video games knows that the Brotherhood are a big fan of power armor and laser weapons. There are lots of power armors to choose from if you're going for a thematic Brotherhood list, uh, from the classic T-51 from Fallout 1 to the high-tech T-60 in Fallout 4 and Fallout 76. But honestly, I have to say my go-to suit if I want to field a force of Brotherhood units has to be the T-45. It has one noticeable drawback in that the T-45 reduces the wearer's agility by one point, but it increases strength by two and has an endurance of three. So this suit can take three points of damage before it's busted up and can switch to its degraded side of its stats. And until the armor is broken, it has an armor value of two plus one strong armor versus both physical and energy weapons, and has four plus one strong armor to radiation. Now that minus one to agility is going to make it harder for your Brotherhood units to hit the mark with thrown items, namely grenades, but no current BOS unit actually draws its melee attack skill from agility. So unless you've got lots of grenades or vertebrate signal flares uh, that you want to bring along with your list, a T-45 suit is still going to add a plus two to your strength and this will significantly boost your chance to hit with melee attacks for any Brotherhood unit. And remember that any unit with a strength of seven or greater gets an extra black die when fighting in close combat. Now the T-51 is a better suit overall, removing that agility penalty and upping your physical armor to three plus one, but at 54 current caps, I'd rather spend the extra points on some improved weaponry and take the T-45 or just bite the bullet and go for the T-60. This is going to increase your overall endurance by one and give you that three plus one to energy damage and physical damage while still being nearly impervious to radiation damage with a four plus one. Now, while the Brotherhood doesn't have a lot in the way of special rules, their units have a good balance of combat and expertise skills pretty much across the board. Now, when looking at the Brotherhood roster, for me, the main unit has got to be the Knight. They have a good chance to hit what they're aiming at in both ranged and melee fights, plus their hardy special ability gives them a plus one strong armor token regardless of wearing power armor or not. There's also the Knight Tech, which is slightly worse unit at shooting, but at all the objective-based expertise skills, they're actually better. Now, there are the Night Patrol and Night Patrol Blade units, but they're overall worse at everything compared to a Knight. These folks are mostly cannon fodder for the Brotherhood, unless you decide to put them in a set of power armor. Think of them as aspirants from the Fallout video games, not unlike the Enclave trainee unit. Now, one of the Night Patrols is better at shooting, that's the standard Night Patrol, while the Night Patrol Blade is better at hitting stuff with melee weapons. But if you put the Night Patrol Blade in a suit of power armor, they actually become a pretty formidable unit when using melee. Lancers are a very squishy unit, so you're gonna wanna be careful when using these, uh, and because they're not very useful in a fist fight at all. But they're probably my go-to Brotherhood unit when it comes to picking off enemies at range. And this is really where the Brotherhood excel, at least in my opinion. Definitely, you put some guys in power armor and throw them down the field, they're gonna do a lot of damage. But as far as I'm concerned, this is a shooting army and Lancers are your shooting unit. They have a perception of seven, so they're amazing shooters and looters because they also search off that perception stat. And they can also hack and lockpick, but they only succeed on a four, making them really only okay at these skills compared to some of the other Brotherhood units that we'll talk about in a minute. They're best used as snipers, and if you give them a laser rifle or a hunting rifle, they'll be lighting up the battlefield very consistently. Now, if you've got the caps room in your army, paladins are a big top tier unit that I try to bring with me whenever I can. They're great shooters, also hitting on sevens like the Lancer, and they're a much better bruiser or big gunner with a strength of six. And that's before strapping on a suit of power armor. And I mean, who isn't gonna take a paladin and put them in power armor? It just makes sense. 
They can also battle cry, and they both search and hack on intelligence of six as far as their expertise skills go. So even with all of these combat abilities, they're actually pretty effective objective runners, except when lockpicking comes into play. They don't have any special or aura abilities, but they do have three physical, two energy, and one radiation armor naturally, which is pretty darn good. For the money, a paladin is going to be worth it on the field. Now when it comes to the Brotherhood's objective runners, Scribes are excellent, and probably one of the best runners in the entire game. As mentioned earlier, most Brotherhood units have a decent spread when it comes to objective-based expertise skills, but Scribes truly outshine them all in exchange for being completely nerfed as combat units. There are two variants of the Scribe. Both have combat skills that are quite poor, and they're limited to using only pistols or melee weapons, but their intelligence is the highest among the faction, and this is what they base all of their expertise skills off of. Standard Field Scribes have an intelligence of 7, whereas the Scribe Shield has an intelligence of 6. To make up for the Scribe Shield's reduced intelligence stats, they have a higher luck of 3 and a Power Armor Repair ability. This allows them to interact with a friendly unit and remove one point of damage from that friendly's power armor at the cost of spending an action. Regardless of the scenario, if I'm building a Brotherhood list, I'm gonna take a scribe with me. First of all, it fits the narrative theme of the Brotherhood of Steel, and in case I run into any sort of expertise skill I need to hack, lock, or search, I know that a scribe can get the job done. Again, super squishy, so, Either keep them hanging back or pair them up with a knight uh, or even a lancer if you have to at the back of the field to make sure that they're not going to get completely written off in the first turn. That about sums it up for the Brotherhood's standard infantry units, but let's take a quick look at some of the unique options you have in a Brotherhood force and one very, very special entry which will get a video all his own at some point down the line. Knight Captain Cade has some pretty cool abilities. This character is found in Fallout 4, and while he's not a big fan of your player character, um, this medic trait allows him to remove some damage off non-power armor models. So if you pair him with a scribe shield, you'll actually have a decent little triage crew that can help keep your units alive a little bit longer. His battle experience or ability also allows a model within presence range to swap out a black, blue, or green effect die for a yellow die. So this can be handy when trying to punch through a heavily armored opponent, and his armor is great at 3-3-1 three, three, and one across the board, but he only has five hit points, so power armor is probably a good idea when bringing Cade into a fight. Now, Lancer Captain Kells is the best shooter in the Brotherhood roster, in my opinion, and his teamwork ability lets him dole out a bonus green or yellow die to up to three units within his presence range, and this actually includes himself because it's an aura ability. Now, he can do this every turn, so this is a great way to increase the accuracy or armor penetration of your shooting units. So I'd keep him at the back of the field with some other lancers or shooters to pretty much guarantee that you're going to hit whatever you aim at every time, every turn. Now, this only leaves Paladin Dance and Elder Maxon uh, as your big, bruising Brotherhood units. Dance is an absolute beast, even outside his power armor. He has a physical armor of 4, a strength of 6, and a range skill of 8, which rivals Lancer Captain Kells. So he absolutely thumps in both melee and in a shootout. His special abilities also let you treat blank yellow die as an armor break within his presence range of blue, which is actually quite good depending on what weapons you've brought along to the fight. And he also gets to ready one additional model within yellow range whenever he readies. Now this pairs really well with a Lancer or one of the Scribe variants as it lets you make some additional shooting or objective running actions as long as you keep Dance really close by in that yellow range. He is just a few caps shy of being the Brotherhood's most expensive unit, and this is before adding his standard AI equipment uh, of a T-60 power armor and plasma rifle, but he's worth it in my opinion. 
Now, Elder Maxon is the leader of the Brotherhood Steel, at least in Fallout 4. And he actually has two different models, one in his T-60 power armor and another in his signature baller battle coat. Now, he's got one point less of perception than Dance, so he's hitting on a seven when shooting, but he does have one extra hit point. And he has very tough armor values as well at three, three, and one. He has the Brave Aura ability, meaning that anyone within his presence range of blue can ignore an incoming battle cry, super handy against super mutants, and he can also bank critical points without the added cost of being heroic, which is a pretty awesome feature if you ask me. His command ability is also pretty cool, allowing him to give one of his actions to a different model within presence range, which is similar but different than, than Dance's ability. Now this can be pretty useful if you need to make one more crack at an expertise, skill, or have a unit in a better combat position than Maxon is when you activate him, um, and don't want to send your top tier Elder into a charge or something to that effect. But all in all, Dance is going to be my elite unit of choice. Sure, he might be an Institute synth in disguise, sent into the Brotherhood to tear them down from the inside, possibly assassinate Elder Maxon, or who knows what other nefarious plot, but he's Paladin Dance. He's just so... Outstanding. Now, fans of Fallout 3 and 4 will know that there's one very notable, democracy-loving unit which we've yet to talk about in this video, and... That's for a few reasons. His name is Liberty Prime. He's a commie-hating, nuke-throwing, eye-laser-shooting, weapon of mass destruction, and he is awesome. The one thing worth noting, though, is that he currently doesn't have any stats. And this isn't technically a usable unit in the game as of the filming of this video. Now, this has admittedly peeved a few folks who shelled out a pretty big cost to get this model when it first arrived. And it's been out for a pretty long time now, and Modifius has promised a Prime-centric campaign some two years ago, which still hasn't materialized. But I've been assured that you Liberty Prime fans out there will have some good news coming your way in the not-too-distant future. Yes, I know you've heard that before, and while I can't tell you exactly what I know, um, I can tell you that there's reason to be excited. So if you're able to hold on just a little bit longer, I guarantee you that there's gonna be something you're gonna be pretty excited to see, and it's gonna be Liberty Prime related. So when that news drops, rest assured, WGNR will be here with another video to tell you all about it. And it'll probably be a good enough reason for me to finally throw down and get my hands on that model myself. I've been holding off because there haven't been any rules for it, but knowing what I know now, I'm gonna have to buy the model. So stay tuned, there will be some Liberty Prime news and a full on Liberty Prime review if and when, when that happens. In the meantime, I hope this video has helped you put together your Brotherhood list or maybe you've learned something about these units that you didn't know that they could do before. Maybe you picked up a little bit of Brotherhood lore uh, along the way, but um, now you know why this is one of the most fun factions to play in this game, at least for me, uh, and one of the most iconic factions in the game. That'll do it for this edition of Better Know a Faction, but stick around when next time I'm going to look at that group of scandalous scavers who love their chems, the Raiders. Stay tuned, WGNR will be back.